There's a growing hue and cry about the amount of money that is being spent in wars overseas. It started in the 60s with Vietnam and Korea, and it uh, grew with the incursions into Iraq. And now there's Afghanistan that is percolating. What is your analysis of this sequence? We should never have been in Iraq or in Afghanistan in the first place. I read from French authors of a book, I can't recall its name, that in July of 2001, members of the Taliban came to the United States to meet with members of the U.S. government. The discussion was not the women in Afghanistan and the burqas that they wore. The discussion was an oil pipeline by Unical, Dick Cheney of which owns some shares in it. This oil pipeline was to come from Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and those areas above um, Afghanistan, through Afghanistan, Pakistan, into the Arabian Gulf, and then to the world. According to these writers, the Taliban were offered a carpet of gold or a carpet of bombs. When the Taliban refused to allow the pipeline to come through Afghanistan, this is July now. By September the 11th, we have the death and destruction of the World Trade Center. Then, within a few days, just a few days, uh -huh, it's these Arabs and it's Mr. Osama bin Laden who was in Afghanistan. So the leader of the Taliban, Mullah Umar, was given an ultimatum by President Bush. Osama bin Laden did this, give him up to us. Mullah Omar, being a Muslim, asked President Bush, show us the evidence of his guilt of this and we will turn him over to you. President Bush said, we're not negotiating with you and the bombs fell on Afghanistan. Well, now we find that in the FBI files, the FBI does not have any evidence that Osama bin Laden was actually the mastermind behind the destruction of 9-11. And if he did, from Afghanistan, what was the predicate for the action against Iraq? It was oil. It was it was taking control of another nation and through them setting up bases that would allow them to be able to attack Iran and control the Middle East. Now all of that is falling apart. And my brother, our brother, President Barack Obama has inherited the madness of an imperial American foreign policy. Are you saying that the President of these United States is swamped and is uh, really parched in another sense for a perspective that would help him deal with this problem? There's just too much going on for him to keep up with. Some are beginning to say that. Well, it's too much going on. I don't say that it's too much for him to deal with. But if he were left to do what his heart, his mind, and true intelligence would tell him to do, he would get us out of Afghanistan as quickly as possible. I said in my Savior's Day speech in February to our brother, find a way to get out of Afghanistan and help America to save its face because there is no win for you in Afghanistan. I said this in February. Now the, the generals are saying that 
we are literally losing the war in Afghanistan. And Biden is saying, let's get out. And others are saying, we cannot win. So now they're talking about using money to pay the Taliban as they paid the insurgents in Iraq. These people don't like America. They'll take your money and still join a force against you. Now you're bombing Pakistan. Now what are you going to do? You was, and you're at the doorstep now of trying to find a way to attack Iran. This is suicidal. America is losing all over the world if she continues on this path. Many are asking though, why don't we have the student uprising that we once had in the 60s? Why aren't the students out there raising cane as they once did about what you've just cited? Because there's a lethargy. There's a, you know, look, Gil, in the 60s, you know, I mean, sex has always been with us, you know. We, we have always loved the female, those of us who were natural men, and the women naturally loved their men. In the 60s, you know, the flower groups, uh, they were sexually active, but they were conscious. Look at the titillation in the movies, in the, in the magazines, in the recording in industry of sex. So when a man's head is between his legs, how can he think progressively? When you see the drug now the, uh, imports into this country, the appetite in the American people for drugs where it is an insatiable appetite that is growing, growing, growing. So the poppies in Afghanistan, the drugs in Central and South America, they have a big market in the United States. And it's because the people are dumbed down, the people are lethargic, the people's head is between their legs, the people are not conscious, the people need a stimulus package to awaken them. Not money, but the fall of the economy of the country will wake up a drug addict. Because if you don't have the money, you can't get the drugs. If the money dries up and the dollar falls into nothingness. Now, if the, in, the inflation goes up, which they're thinking that they're going to raise the interest rates. And if the inflation goes up, the dollar is going down. They're printing money that they have no backing for. They're just printing and printing more and more money. And that's why the American people are so angry with President Barack and Top and the Bush administration that gave a bailout. A bailout to who? The very people that are robbing the world and robbing the poor have been bailed out by the poor and the country is so far in debt today that it doesn't look like America will ever get out of it. Do you have a prescription for the deterioration in the black home? Because so many homes in the hood are broken. The man can't provide and the women are angry in many instances, there's a lot of bloodshed. The young people are on each other's back. Do you have any prescription, any hope? Yeah, of course. There's lots of hope, um, Brother Gill. But we have to lose hope in that that has destroyed us and begin to hope again in ourselves. You know, uh, the paper that we would um, get a loan from the bank and the banks would bundle that loan and sell it to foreign countries. It's called toxic paper. Toxic paper 
destroyed the economy of the world. What you see in us is extreme toxicity. We've been poisoned against ourselves and the black community now is considered toxic waste. And when you have a community that is considered toxic waste, you can't build on toxic waste. If you do, those that build on it will be poisoned by the poisoning of the water, etc. Well, now there's a, a, a desire in some to get rid of the problem totally, meaning finding scientific ways to kill off an entire people. 